This video is sponsored by Skillshare. All right, so here's the thing. I picked up an A6100 for a really good deal about six months ago, and around that time, I was trying to find a camera that I could use as a dedicated talking head camera for YouTube, which I'm using right now. And I was tired of setting up my cameras, the ones I use for work, and then packing them back down. You know, it's super annoying, first world problems. But you know, many of you know, I'm a professional photographer, cinematographer, and you know, packing up my gear after shoots and setting it up and then taking it down just for YouTube videos was kind of a task that I didn't really want to do. Anyway, I was thinking about what I could get for under $1,000 that would have good 4K video, good face detection autofocus, a mic jack, and even a flip screen. You know, and something that had a lens mount that I already had lenses for, and the cameras I came up with were the Canon M50, the Fuji X-T30, the A6400, and the A6100. And from my experience, the X-T30 probably has the best video quality out of all of those cameras, but the A6400 had the best autofocus in video. And since this camera is gonna be used for talking head, I want the most reliable autofocus without any hunting or pulsing in the background. So I kind of lean towards the A6400, which you know I've shot with a lot. I've actually made a few reviews on that camera. But the problem is I was looking at these cameras and I realized I didn't really want to spend that money. So I actually found an A6100 for 650 bucks Canadian, which is a really, really good deal, but we'll come back to that in a bit. So for the last six months, you've basically been seeing me shooting with this camera for the entire time on the A6100 for all the talking head stuff. I wasn't planning on making a video on this camera, but honestly, I think it's kind of worth making and talking about because I use it so often and I was just on B&H's site and the price of this camera right now is on sale for $5.98 US dollars. And if you're thinking about getting one, you better scoop that deal up because I have no idea how long it's gonna last. So as I mentioned, I've reviewed the A6400 last year and I was pretty impressed by it. I've definitely recommended it to many of you guys that have asked me what camera to buy under $1,000. And I also think it's one of the best cameras for streamers as well, you know, but you know, this camera is almost identical as far as the features go. You know, they both have the same 24 megapixel sensor, uh, 425 phase detect autofocus points, the same real time tracking, flip screen, mic jack, all the same, basically the same features. But when it comes to photography with the A6100, the image quality is Again, identical to the A6400. I haven't taken many photos with the A6100 because that's not why I bought it. But you know, I have with the A6400, and you know, they have the same great image quality, the same great handling and autofocus, and you'd have a really hard time telling them apart. Now the differences in these cameras only come down to a few things. They may or may not be important to you. It just depends on what you do with the camera. And you know, the A6100 is built out of plastic like an A6000, where the A6400 is built out of metal and has some weather sealing. And the A6100 also lacks picture profiles like S-Log and HLG. Now that kind of sucks, but I was able to create my own flat picture profile by modifying the standard profile to negative three, negative three, negative one. And then I created my own LUT for it, which I think looks pretty good. You let me know what you think in the comments how this looks. So obviously it's not gonna get you the most dynamic range, but I have a feeling that if you're Looking for this type of camera, you're not the type of shooter that really cares that much about dynamic range. This camera still has amazing 4K video, which is a 6K readout down sample to 4K, which Sony does really well and has been doing in pretty much all their cameras lately. It also has the newest autofocus system, which is insane. I think that Sony has the best autofocus system out of any camera right now. Um, I'm not just saying that either. You know, I've shot with a lot of cameras, a lot of the newest cameras, and you know, next to Canon's dual pixel autofocus, you know, it's I still think it's better, and Fuji's probably in third place. But you know, that's why I continue to recommend Sony cameras if you need that super predictable and reliable face and eye detection autofocus tracking, because they have it. So as I mentioned, it has Sony's incredible real-time tracking, which is amazing. It's in the A6400, the A6600, and the A7. R4, I think it's even in the A9 Mark II. You just tap focus on the screen, you can lock in objects, you can even click on them in the focus box and it'll track them. It's so good, it's the exact same system it's in the A6400 as I mentioned, and I shot a video about that, just going over the autofocus settings, and if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link in the description. It also shoots amazing 1080p 120 frames per second with audio, just like the other cameras. And you know, it's got the updated color science that all those new APS-C cameras have. So it shares the same color science as the A6400 and the A6600. But this camera is obviously not perfect and it does have its flaws. And it's also why it's priced lower than the A6400. So, you know, I bought this camera knowing its limitations going in. And as I said, it doesn't have the extra picture profiles like S-Log or HLG. Um, you know, it's made out of plastic. It has a lower resolution EVF and no weather sealing and the small grip and not the best battery life using that old NPFW50 battery. 
So for my setup, I'm actually recording out of the HDMI and the A6100 into my Atomos Ninja 5. It's easier for me to monitor myself and it can take the SSD out pop it into my computer and just edit directly off that. As I mentioned, it doesn't have the best battery life, it gets around one hour 4K recording. Luckily, you can run the camera off USB while it's charging the battery at the same time. You know, so that's how my camera set up. The other issue is when you attach the monitor and you're shooting 4K video, face detection becomes disabled. But there is a workaround for that, which I've had to do with my A7 III. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how to do that. So as you can see, face detection is working no problem. It's tracking me all over the place. Right as soon as I turn on this external monitor, which is plugged in through HDMI, face detection turns off. So we need to go into the menu over to the toolbox, the third menu over and then down to 4K output select and change this to HDMI only, either 30 frames or 24 frames. So changing the setting won't record to the SD card anymore. It'll only output a signal and then you can record it with an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5. Okay, now a few words from our sponsor. Right now is the best time to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. With Skillshare's online classes, what you find might just surprise and inspire you. So for those of you that don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. There's lots of amazing classes related to photography and filmmaking, just like cinematic wedding films with Maddie Hapoya, Portrait Photography, Working with Natural Light with Benjamin Heath. Moody Food Photography with Sean Dalton. There's tons of classes that will help you learn from the ground up with an easy step-by-step -step layout, kind of like chapters of a book. This way, Skillshare can fit your schedule and your skill level. Skillshare is not just for beginners, it's also for real-world working creative professionals as well. I just started a new class on bookkeeping for freelancers, how to handle your finances with Emily Simcox. I've been running my business now for over seven years, but I feel like... There's still more to learn about bookkeeping and you know, maybe this is something you guys would also be interested in. Most classes are under 60 minutes and include a combination of video lessons as well as a class project. This way you can go out and use your new skills in the real world. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when you're comparing it to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. So the first thousand people that click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership. Explore your creativity and learn something new this year. Okay. Just to recap the reasons why I bought this camera. I wanted a good 4K image, that was priority. Amazing face detection autofocus. Flip screen, so I could see myself and see the settings. Also mic input, so I could directly run my DD D3 Pro right into the camera without having to sync audio afterwards. And the ability to plug it in so I didn't have to worry about battery life. And I've yet to actually ever have it overheat on me after hours of use. I've even used it to live stream on Twitch, which I've also recommended the A6400 for. It's an amazing streaming camera. And I also made a video about that as well if you wanna check that out. Here's a hard decision. Do I recommend the A6100 over the A6400? You know, I got a really good deal on mine and the camera's perfect for what I want it for. The only issue I'm struggling with is that it's on sale right now for $598, which makes it $250 less than the A6400, which will give you extra money to buy a better lens. But if you're gonna buy this camera when it's not on sale, they're only $150 different and at that, price point, I would actually go with the A6400. Um, not having the ability to have picture profiles like HLG or the better build quality in EVF kind of makes the A6400 way more worth it for only 150 bucks. Okay, that's it for this video. I just talked for a really long time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you just like this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Don't forget to wash your hands. I'll see you guys in the next one. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I finished the video. Test pop, no pop filter. Oh, this coffee's getting cold. Do you like cold coffee? Super ham, handful, handy, helpful. I just, I did helpful and a handful. Handful is not what I wanted to say.